In inequality means many different things to many different people. What I understand by inequality, or at least what I understand by the idea of unfair inequalities, is structural impediments which prevent people from realizing their potential. And what I mean by that is that people having their opportunities in life constrained by the force of circumstance, by the country that they happen to be born in, by whether their parent happens to be rich or poor, by whether they're a boy or a girl, by whether they're black or white. Now, you, these are things which, if we believe in equal opportunity, shouldn't matter. What ought to determine outcomes is, 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 is people's talents and their efforts, not these circumstances over which they don't have any control. And I think the drive for equity is about expanding freedom and diminishing the, the impact and the constraint that's imposed by those unfair disparities. Well, I think they haven't actually put it in the centre of, of the agenda, and to my mind, that's the problem. If I said to you, if, if I was a government, if I was a prime minister of a country, and I said to you, our policy is to ensure that girls who are born into poor rural families will have five years less education than a boy born into an urban family, you would accuse me of a gross violation of, of human rights. And yet, you can predict with absolute certainty that a poor rural girl in northern Nigeria won't get more than two years in education, whereas a rich urban boy will get nine or ten years. Now that, that is intrinsically unfair, and unless we can tackle that type of inequality, any prospect of achieving an ambitious set of post-2015 Millennium Development Goals really won't be worth the paper that the vision document is written on. The, the problem, I think, is that Everyone now acknowledges that inequality is a problem, but nobody wants to face up to the implications of doing something about it. And that's because at the heart of the inequality problem are the power relationships that, that perpetuate the very disparities that we're, that we're concerned with. So unless we can shift the power relationships, we're not going to accelerate progress towards the goals. We need to look beyond the averages and there are two fundamental reasons why inequality needs to be put at the heart of the post-2015 agenda. The, f the first one is really an intrinsic reason and that is to say the extremes of inequality that we see around the world today, whether we look between countries or within countries, are unfair, they're indefensible and we need to tackle them. It, th this is a development issue in and of itself People care about inequality. That's why we see the demand for greater equity as such a central part of really virtually every social movement around the world. You know, whether it's driving forward the agenda for equal rights for women, whether it's tackling disparities between rich people and poor people in sub-Saharan Africa, whether it's about equalizing opportunity through public spending. People understand that there's a, there's a basic fairness issue involved here. But the second reason is this. We, we get a lot of focus in the debates on the Millennium Development Goals on what you could describe as absolute targets, the, the eradication of absolute income poverty, the prevention of any unnecessary child death or, or, or the death of any woman in pregnancy and childbirth. Now these are goals which we all support, but if we want to achieve those goals, we need to tackle the inequalities that are preventing progress. And that's why in the, in the, in the lecture, in the, the Kapuczynski lecture, I make the case for what I call stepping stone targets. These are relative targets which are about shifting the distribution in a way that facilitates accelerated progress towards the absolute goal. If we improved the global and national distribution of income, it would convert economic growth into poverty reduction much more rapidly and that's an objective that surely we all ought to be in favour of. I, I think the European Union is incredibly well placed to play a leadership role in this area. If you look at the European Union's own social agenda, which is an agenda built around the principle of inclusion, it's an agenda which has, been, which has historically been about narrowing the gap between the poorest parts of the European Union and the wealthier parts of the European Union. 
And that agenda is being pursued partly because it's seen as a moral and an ethical imperative, but partly also because European political leaders in the past have recognised that it's good for efficiency, it's good for the development of markets. You don't get functioning and efficient, inclusive capitalism in deeply unequal marketplaces. Now, I think if we could extend that principle to the developing world using the leverage that comes with the European Union's aid programme, we could really put Europe in a leadership role in driving the whole Millennium De Development Goal agenda and the post-2015 agenda forward. At the moment, the role of the European Union has been, I believe, unnecessarily muted. And I would like to see the European Union getting off the fence, projecting the principles which have been so important and so valuable in Europe, principles of social justice, principles of inclusion, into the debate on the Millennium Development Goals.